Hi, in this little demonstration, I'm going to show how to technically take a macro shot. All right, with macro, it's kind of cool. We have one subject, all right? Unlike with wide angle and close focus wide angle, we just worry about one subject in the foreground, all right? Now, there's three main things. First, we have to remember, approach the subject closely, try to find a subject that's not moving real quickly, all right? Never damage the reef or harass the, the wildlife. Um, we have a few settings, very simple. Let's break it down. ISO, very easy. Set it to the lowest setting. We want good, high quality. Shutter speed, simple. Keep it at the fastest that it will allow your camera to sync with your strobe. For me, it's 1 250th of a second. And then the last thing is the strobe power. Again, easy for me. I set it at TTL. I always get an adequate exposure, you know, depending on what I'm focusing on. And you can adjust exposure compensation by looking at your histogram and LCD. But those are three basic things you start with. Now we can get a technically good image. We only have three variables left, okay? We have aperture, which controls our depth of field. Now, check out my previous videos on working distance and aperture at various distances with both the 60 millimeter macro and 105 millimeter macro and how depth of field changes with apertures, okay? But basically, the depth of field is minuscule with a macro lens. Uh, with a 105 lens on a crop sensor at a small aperture like f32, it's only 0 0.19 inches, okay? And with an open aperture at f2.8, it's almost zero, less than 0 0.02 inches. So we have very little depth of field. For focus, you can use single servo or continuous focus, depending on whether a subject is moving or not. Basically, I like to um, use autofocus, usually uh, continuous focus, but I lock the focus and then I rock back and forth. I want to control exactly what's in focus. So we have aperture we control. We control what we focus on. Now we have strobe position. The, stro the traditional strobe position for macro, like this fish here, is straight ahead. The cone of light emanates out like this. We catch the subject and we don't illuminate the intervening water column, minimize backscatter, okay? However, if we have a distracting background, there's a few things we can do, all right? We can put our strobe straight up ahead or to the side and point it at our camera. Now we are illuminating the water column, but the cone of light comes like this and it's catching the subject and missing the background. We have to be careful. You have to look at your LCD and look at your, you know, to make sure you caught the subject, you didn't, you, you, that you did illuminate the subject and that you still missed the background. It can be tricky, but it can be done. So we can control strobe position. If we have a bad background, we can also open our aperture to blur the background. So we can make the background dark with our strobe position, or we can blur the background so it's not noticeable by opening our aperture. And um, the last thing we can do is get real close to the subject and fill the frame so there is no background. The whole, the whole image is the subject. Pretty cool. All that's left now is composition. The composition is the angle that we're approaching the subject and where we're putting various parts of the subject in our frame. So um, I'm going to talk about composition in subsequent tutorials, but let's just check out a little example. Okay, let's look at an example, a subject, a portrait or a profile of a fish. Now, let's say I have a beautiful red coral and a beautiful background, and I found this and I see this nice fish right in front of it. Well, I can keep a small aperture because I want to see this beautiful background. All right, so I'm going to use my strobe straight ahead position, very small aperture. The cone of light will come down like this, okay? It'll catch this nice fish. I'll have a little bit of depth of field, so hopefully a lot of it will be in focus, especially I'll, I'll concentrate on the eye, and I'll see this beautiful background, okay? But let's pretend we don't have a beautiful red coral, okay? Let's pretend we have these ugly baseball mitts, which we'll say is a distracting, murky, mucky, uh, a rocky background that we don't want. We want this fish to pop out. So we have a few options. We can open our aperture, all right, but then we have to decide what to focus on. To open the aperture will minimize our depth of field, so this will be extremely blurred. But we want to either usually get the fish dead head on and focus on the eyes, or have it so that the uh, fish is completely parallel with the plane, with the sensor of the camera so that we can get a good portion of the fish in focus. That can be a little tricky. We have to position ourselves and our camera. Another option is we can keep our aperture small, but we can position the strobe 
toward the camera like this so that the cone of light comes like that and it catches the fish and not the distracting background okay but now we are illuminating uh, the water column between the camera and the subject and if it's murky water we're going to get more backscatter plus this this is kind of tricky you have to look at your LCD to see are you catching the fish and are you missing the background it takes it's, it's trial and error I don't always have a lot of luck with that uh, uh, technique and the last option is we can just get really really close to the fish pull our strobe in tight and just let the fish fill the whole frame and then we won't see the background because the fish is filling the whole frame Anyway, it's just a little demonstration of how to shoot macro, and please tune in to subsequent tutorials where we're going to talk about something really cool, composition. Thank you.